You're listening to the Christian Indie Artists and Songwriters Podcast, the place where faith, music, and life intersect. We exist to help Christian indie artists and songwriters just like you get songs heard. Hey, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Christian Indie Artists and Songwriters Podcast. I'm Brian, your host, and I hope that you're doing well wherever you find yourself today. Today in Florida, it is the second day of fall, and fall, I'm learning, is probably my favorite season of the year. It just starts getting the whole holiday thing rolling, and as you guys will probably learn more and more, I am a Christmas fanatic. Uh, We have a thing called Jingle Jam Friday, so we can discuss that on a whole other episode because honestly, Jingle Jam Friday deserves a whole other episode. But on today's episode, I have a chat for you with my good friend, James Collington of the band Collington. Now, it's kind of a cool story how I came to know James. He is always the like number one recommended like artist to me on my personal music on Spotify. So through that process, we connected through Facebook, actually. And um, yeah, we had a great conversation about James and his family and how he got into music and now why he's making a a cross-country move from Rhode Island all the way to California to continue to chase after what God has placed in his heart. So I know that you're going to be encouraged by that. Yeah, as always, thank you so much for listening. Just It's amazing to see how many... uh, People are listening to this podcast and the impact it's making for the kingdom. So thank you for listening. You know, if you could take a minute and leave a review, that'd be super helpful. We got a ton of reviews now, you know, and the more reviews we have, the better chance we have to be heard by more Christian indie artists and songwriters. So I hope that you enjoy this interview with my friend, James Collington. I'm here with my friend, James Collington, that um, it's actually a really cool story is on my Spotify profile. One of my like artists is always Collington. So I'm excited to to uh, introduce him to the audience here. And yeah, man. So James, where are you from and uh, how are you doing today? Hey, Brian. Good to be here. I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Just uh, it's it's a warm September day here on the east coast of Florida. It's balmy to say the least, but you know, that just comes with the terms. Now you said that you are from uh, Rhode Island, the northeast? That's correct. Yeah. Some people think it's part of New York, but it, it is a uh, Definitely one of the first 13 colonies and definitely a state. There you go. Just, just saying, you know, no bragging. It's just facts, right? (laughs) Yeah, man. I don't write history. It's just the way it is. (laughs) You don't write it, but you make it. That's all. That's it. (laughs) Well, cool, man. Well, one thing I always like to ask people is just, you know, how did you get into music? You know, how did Collington kind of come to be? But even before that, you know, what got you into music in the first place? Yeah. Great question. I, I kind of like when I was a kid, I wanted to learn guitar and my brother wanted to learn drums. And so I eventually got a guitar. I hated it. So I sold it. And then probably when I was in middle school, um, my brother had guitars and drums laying around and um, he kind of picked it up. And so they were just kind of around the couch and stuff like that. So, you know, like a good person in 2003-ish, uh, learned some Nirvana song, Smells Like Teen Spirit, and then um, never really thought too much about it. It was just kind of something I dabbled in and just because it was there and available. And then fast forward a few years, got saved, got to know Jesus, and there was just opportunities where I was needed. I, I had pretty much just said yes to Jesus, and the pastor kind of, um, you know, he took a chance on me, and he was like, hey, man, like just knowing you and how you're wired, like I really feel like it would help your relationship with the Lord if you played on the worship team and could help you hear from him and hmm. just do the whole relationship. And so, which just being a new believer, that's a total uh, Hail Mary on me and him kind of putting all his chips on me. Like that's a lot of responsibility in hindsight. And uh, so that's kind of how I started doing music. And then with Collington stuff, uh, you know, it just felt like as I was graduating high school, like, because a big verse for me just coming to faith was Jeremiah 29, 11, that God has mm-hmm. plans for me. And with that, I was graduating high school and I was freaking out. I was like, I don't know what to do. And with college and just being in faith community, you know, all your friends think you need to go to Bible school. And I was like, I don't know if I should do that. And just trying to figure out the right thing for my life. And um, I probably went down to like every altar call for about a year and um, just kind of really tried to hear what the Lord wanted for me. and. One night, I went down to an altar call. I was outside of Boston at a church. We were visiting with my church. I kind of just approached the guy after and um, was like, hey, like, I'm just trying to figure stuff out. Like, will you pray for me? He's like, yeah, let's do it. And then after he was like, because he didn't know me at all. And he was like, do you sing? I was like, no. (laughs) He's like, do you do music? (laughs) And I was like, yeah. Because at that time, I was uh, primarily drums and just like occasional acoustic stuff. But drums were my main instrument. He's like, well. 
I feel like the Lord um, is telling me that he's going to use you in music and primarily singing. The rest kind of wrote itself. Uh, I always imagined a, a tour bus would kind of show up and pick me up the next day. Of course, um, and I'd play works. drums. And then <laughs> the, the tour bus never came. Um, and, you know, I was just like, well, I'm, I'm sick of just like not doing anything. So I just started writing songs. And I was like, I'm, if I can just record like a five song acoustic EP on GarageBand, like that'll be great. And then literally just doors started flying open. Um, like I started booking shows like very shortly after, right after offers to record came through, like literally like was visiting another church one night, just worship pastor was just making his rounds and introduced himself. Cause I was new. I was like, Hey, I'm James. He's like, Hey, I'm Zach. Can I record you? <laughs> it's like literally how the conversation <laughs> went. So that's how I got my demos. And it's, um, it's just always been like this journey where it's like, I'm so honored. Um, Cause I, I just don't want to be the guy that's like asking the Lord to bless his plans. Like I want to be a part of what Jesus is doing. And um, I'm so privileged to be able to do this music thing. And mm. my deal with him is like, as long as you keep opening doors, I'll keep doing this. And he's been faithful to that. And here we are talking today. It's 2020. Man, that's, that's great. And just being, you know, flexible and um, nimble to kind of move where he moves. Cause you know, you'd mentioned earlier that you're actually making a big physical move too right and that you're kind of carrying all this all this music stuff with you to this new journey right that's correct i'm moving from rhode island to davis california man that's a that's how many miles three thousand you said approximately yeah give or take wow so that's i mean that's that's a great testament to just like you said you know god you open the doors i'll always walk through them even if that seems you know scary or whatever it might be, but that's a huge step. Cause I'm sure that, you know, in this new season, you'll be blessed beyond anything just, just because of what you're doing, but then also taking that big, uh, faithful step. So, um, you know, you kind of have how, how I would say like an indie rock kind of vibe, right. Is primarily what, what I've heard from you on Spotify. Yeah. 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 That's fair. So, I mean, in the best possible way. So, you know, with <laughs> that, like what kind of inspired you? Cause it's cool because you know, it's, you're not doing like one necessarily like CCM or worship necessarily, you know? So in general, like, how did you come to feel like, Hey, I want to bring my own vibe and my kind of indie rockness into a more of a faith, you know, based style. So how did, how did you come to that conclusion? Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't really this necessarily, um, this conscious conclusion where I, I had a, a marketing meeting with myself and it's was like, this is who you are. And this is, who your target market needs to be. Um, you know, it's always just been kind of this hard on my sleeve thing. I've, I, I say this all the time and it, it's just true. Like I equate my writing to journal writing. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I, my songs are pages in my journal and it's just me processing things. So sometimes it's just these prayers, um, you know, Jesus is just such a huge part of my life that naturally I can't help sing about it. Um, but it's really just me processing life. And, um, you know, I'm, at the end of the day, I guess my target market is me. So <laughs> I love surfing. I love coffee. I love Jesus and I love having a good time. So that's kind of the momentum behind the direction I take. That's awesome, man. So, you know, like I said in the beginning, like I, I always see your names popping up on your songs, popping up on playlists and stuff. And, and so, you know, there's a lot of people listening that definitely want to know, you know, how, you know, any strategies or tips or advice you have about Spotify and, you know, how do you approach that, you know, and you can go into as much or as little detail as you feel, but like when you're, when you're working on a, when you're working on music and, and ultimately like, you know, going to put it on streaming platforms, like what's kind of your mindset with, with all that. And then once songs are out, like, what do you do with them? Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of, um, song placement and song strategy in terms of Spotify. Um, that's, that's when I will become a little more market oriented. Um, but honestly it's, it's not at the same time. And, um, I'll explain. So like, like who am I like, again, at the end of the day, like, what do I love? And so like so much of my playlists are not, um, I mean, it's just a part of who I am. So like, I love surfing. I love coffee. Um, the Enneagram destroyed my life. <laughs> and like, those are branded Same. playlists. I'll usually look into but, like, just looking to coffee playlists, just look into surfing playlists, just looking into Enneagram playlists. Um, and they exist. And it's just been like super cool to do that. And, um, cause it's just who I am, you know, it's like, if I start looking into like 
I don't know, like playlist for people who race cars or something like that. That's just not who I am. Yeah. Um, and you know, the feedback's been pretty good cause it's just kind of a natural thing. Well, with that in mind, is it cool? Um, just, just cause I'm curious, like, you know, you said the Enneagram wrecked your life. I mean, when I, when I found out about that too, it definitely caused me to think in a different way. So I'm just curious, like what, what's your score and you know, how has it affected you once you kind of realized the Enneagram? Dude, that, that, that's such a loaded question. You don't even <laughs> know it. So, uh, I thought I was a, a pure nine, um, uh, which is the peacemaker mm -hmm. and, uh, not to be confused with the peacekeeper. Um, mm. so peacemaker is a very active thing. It's not passive. Peacekeeping is passive, but so that, that's, and then, uh, <laughs> I'm coming to terms that I have a wing eight. Uh, okay. which is a challenger, uh, especially when I'm driving and, um, <laughs> which is weird because like Enneagram nine, it's like in Enneagram eight, I feel like they couldn't be more different personalities. And, uh, so it's just like, but like my wife was telling me about it like a few years ago and <laughs> I just got so defensive, um, about it and I was like so upset. Uh, I, I just wasn't ready to take the red pill or the blue pill, whatever one <laughs> makes you woke. And it just like, it was very like, you know, cause it's, and I kind of went all in a hundred percent and like too far instead of taking it with a grain of salt, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I kind of made myself heart sick over it that way. And now I'm just kind of in a place where like, I don't want anything to do with this at all. And then someday I'll get back into the middle. Um, but you know, it's been cool. I've been able to learn a lot about myself, identify weaknesses, uh, strengths. Um, but it feels like the weaknesses are usually more highlighted. Um, it's not for the faint of heart. And then, but it's been cool. Like even in my leadership strategy and stuff like that, when I'm working with teams, it's kind of taught me that it's important for me. Cause it's just like, I, I don't, I'll avoid conflict at all costs if I have my way. Of course. But sometimes, you know, it's like if someone's being a jerk on your team, um, that affects your whole team. And, mm -hmm. um, I guess kind of my wing eight is where like, I'll jump in and cause they say it can be like a coaching personality in nine wing eight. And it's just like, if you're affecting my team, like I, you don't mess with my team. Like I, I will come after you kind of thing. Um, and so the goal always is like, if someone's out in left field to kind of bring them back in, you know, not like attack people. Yeah. That, that's, that's where I'm at right now processing the Enneagram. Yeah. It's definitely a, it can be a game changer. I remember when we, when we found out about it a couple of years ago also, you know, I did it and I was, it's really interesting how accurate it can be. Cause when I first did it, I was a one and I okay. still think that and I, I probably still am that, but also like we went through a pretty significant change last year. And so like I did the test again and sure enough, I was a one, but it said all of my wings were balanced. And I was like, what does that mean? So I talked to a buddy of mine who actually is like certified Enneagram, you know, oh. full, full on into it. And he said, usually when your, your wings are balanced, it's because you're going through significant change. I was like, well, Hey, Oh, that's actually happening. So, um, we went to a conference earlier this year actually. And, the another person, another Enneagram person suggested that I was a nine one instead of a one nine. So I was going to say that <laughs> you think that, <laughs> well, I was going to say you sound a little nine ish just getting to know you, but, uh, I think, you know, I, I feel that way too. Um, especially when it comes to conflict, I will run, do whatever I can to avoid it. And I think it helped serve me well in like leading, um, like teams of worship, just like, like you said, like you kind of, can empathize with everyone's position and try to find the common thread between all people in a quick period of time. Because sometimes, you know, when somebody's yeah. wanting to be individualized, but you're on a team, it can be tricky, you know? So yeah, I think the nine one, not, not nine one one though, but nine one has been kind of where I'm at now. And I think it, it's worked well in, in general. So yeah, like you said, it can be a deep, deep rabbit hole. So, um, you know, another thing I like to ask, is, you know, it, as you said, you just kind of naturally fell into music, you know, your brother just kind of had stuff around and you just felt some inclination. And then through various conversations and things like God was like, Hey, you're basically going to sing. And then next thing you know, you're singing and writing, and then you do that. And next thing you know, you're getting more opportunities to record and then play shows. So it's like, it's been really cool natural progression that, you know, has been your story so far. So with all that in mind, do you have any type of um, advice or something you you would suggest to your younger self about, you know, your journey and good or bad, you know, whatever it might be, just 
I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah. Great question. Oh man. <laughs> For me, I, if I, if I could go back in time and, and slap younger James, I think I would just tell him, uh, don't overthink it. And I, for me, like I always felt like, you know, I was missing a piece of gear or something like that, mm. uh, like a guitar or a microphone, uh, which those things are good things in themselves. But man, like those things are not a substitute for kind of an anointing. You know, it's not always the what, but the who. Mm. And um, the who being who you are, not the band. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it could be the who who knows it, it could be the who <laughs> Pete, <laughs> Pete Townsend and uh, yeah and it's just for me if I could just tell myself anything it would just be like just stay close to Jesus he's your rock uh, and at the end of the day you know it's songs come songs go um, MC Hammer was a thing at the end of the day like uh, eternity is a thing and um you know, my music doesn't get to go with me there. And mm -hmm. so just kind of leaving a legacy that lasts for eternity. You know, a relationship with Jesus always needs to come first. And I, I think everything else will follow second. Man, that's really good and, and so true. You know, like the, the cool part is, you know, the music can come with us, but it will stay. Like you said, so like legacy. So following after what Jesus wants for us is is the way to get the inspiration to ultimately record and say the things that he's calling us to say, you know, and that's what will stick around behind us. So, man, that's really good advice. You know, before we wrap up, I'd love for you to, you know, talk about um, any projects you, I know you released a song recently, but anything you got cooking up, you know, and stuff you're working on. And then also at the end, just have you kind of share how people can find you. So you got anything new in the works music wise? Yeah, so we have another song, which I guess everyone's going to hear it from here first. Um, yeah. It's a song called Vagrant. It's coming out September the 25th, which is a Friday. Cool. And um, so that's kind of the capstone of this song release series that we're doing. Um, so four singles total we've put out, and that's the last one. And then one of the the second song I put out with my, my beautiful wife singing, um, you know, I was like, put all my chips on her. We're, we're yeah. spending the budget on hiring my wife to come out and do a <laughs> song. She's not cheap. And so uh, <laughs> I just it? remixed that song, actually. Oh, uh, cool. The song's been doing really well. And then uh, a friend of mine who's also a hero, his name's Bill Sheneman. Um, you might know him from some small hole in the wall bands uh, like Queen, Bruce Springsteen, and Mick Jagger. Uh, yeah, I've heard of a couple of those guys. Yeah, he's got <laughs> album credits with them, and uh, wow. so he 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 liked the song a bunch, and he's like, "We should remix this." So we remix that. So that that'll be coming out um, shortly after Vagrant as well. Cool. So a couple more releases for 2020, eh? That's it. That's it. The year might be rough, but uh, I'm still plowing through. Heck yeah, man! You got to persistence is key, right? Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Cool, man. Well. Um... Yeah, how can people connect with you? What's the best way for people to find you and you know just get to know you and your music a little better? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Spotify is always awesome. Apple Music, uh, Instagram, Facebook. You know, I'm around. I'm not, I'm not too hard to find. Cool. Yeah, it's always helpful when your last name is is also your band project, right? <laughs> that kind of helps. Absolutely. It's like, it's James Collington. What's the name of his band? Oh, Collington. Yes. Simple. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I hear it all though. Collingwood, Collingsworth. Um, it, it gets butchered a lot. Oh yeah. My last name is Bolivar. So you can only imagine how many <laughs> ways I've heard that said before. <laughs> I, I can only imagine. <laughs> Speaking of mercy, me. <laughs> all right. Exactly. Um, well, man, this was awesome. And thanks you so much for you know taking the time to meet, meet up here and connect. And, uh, yeah, I, one thing I like to do too, is just, um, pray over each guest that God will continue to pour out. So before we close, I want to pray for you, man. So, um, thank you, God, thank you so much for James. Thank you so much for our, uh, our new friendship and just, uh, excited to see him as he follows you more closely than ever. Lord, um, making this big move across the country, literally to, you know, chase after your calling. Lord, I just pray that he's going into land that you've already, uh, plowed. You've already prepared this land that he's about to step into God and, and what's waiting for him. It may not be overnight, but it may be, who knows God, but, um, whatever you have there for him, it just exceeds and blows, blows the expectations out of the water, God, because with you, all things are possible, Lord. And, yeah. and like 
like you remind us in Jeremiah 29, 11, that you have a plan of purpose for our lives, not to harm us, but to prosper us, God. So I just pray that prospering comes over James, his wife, and his whole family as he steps into this new season. Just pray that these uh, releases coming up are just um, met uh, with just excitement and and people can just dig in and find you inside this music that comes from you through James and Collington. And just uh, we just thank you for him. Thank you for him uh, giving his time and sharing his wisdom with us here today, God. And we just bless amazing things are ahead for him and his music and ultimately his life with you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. We want to help reach as many Christian indie artists and songwriters as possible. And one way we can do that is with your help. So if you could take a minute and leave us a review on iTunes, that would be so appreciated. This is how the iTunes algorithm will push this content out to more and more Christian indie artists and songwriters. So like I said, if you could just take a couple seconds, leave us a review, that would be so awesome. It means so much to us and we would really appreciate it.